Hello and welcome back to the Burr Vlog. It's freezing today. It's about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you outside the United States, that's about 3 degrees Celsius. So what do the bees do to cope with weather like this? Well, they ball up into a cluster inside the hive and they share their heat. The bees in the center of the cluster get closer together. Unfortunately, there's comb that's in the way. So what they do is they go inside the comb. They actually go headfirst into the cells to fill that gap in. And they tighten that cluster up really tight into a nice little ball. And the bees in the center vibrate to generate heat. And that heats up the whole cluster. The bees on the outside will be a little bit colder, but they provide an insulating barrier. I'm going to be making some modifications to this five frame nuke today to make it a little bit easier for them to cope with the temperatures. In a feral colony, where the hive might be living inside the cavity of a tree, the tree provides some advantages that our man-made boxes just don't have. So let's jump on over and take a look at a bee tree and see if we can identify some of those differences. Now here's my favorite bee tree. Unfortunately, from the outside, all we can see is just this crack that's an opening. I can stick the camera in there and see some bees, and that's really cool. But we can't really see what the cavity inside looks like. If we were to take a cross section of the tree and take a look at the cavity, we wouldn't see something that looks like our hives, the tiny square boxes. We would see an irregular shape with thick walls for better insulation. But most importantly, the ceiling would not be flat like our hives. It would probably be domed or maybe even a V shape or a wedge. This is very important when we're considering condensation inside the hive. With a V-shape or a domed surface, we don't have anywhere for the condensation to gather and rain down on the bees. It would just flow down the walls. There's another advantage that these trees have over our little boxes, and that's the inside surface of the cavity is very rough, and the bees want to apply propolis to that. What propolis is, is it's a tree resin or plant resins that the bees harvest and they bring in. They don't eat it, but they apply it to all the surfaces and it provides an antifungal or antimicrobial barrier and that helps to improve the health of the bees. If we could do something like that to our own hives, maybe that would be very helpful to the bees. So let's head back to our hives. So let's take a look at some of the things that I've done to this box to try to mimic or at least make up for the fact that we just don't have these advantages that a tree has. First of all, the way I have this stacked is up at the top here is a box of just honey. Down in the second box was their brew chamber, and it had a little bit of honey as well. But most of this, at this time of year, will be empty comb, something for them to cluster in. And down at the bottom, it's completely empty. There are frames down there, but they didn't draw out any comb in them. This spacer goes around three sides. So the front side here is open, which gives them a way to ventilate the moisture and gives them an upper entrance, which is an advantage to the bees. In the cold winters, sometimes it's easier for them to exit out the top instead of the bottom to take their cleansing flights. Here in Portland, Oregon, insulating the hives is not as important as controlling moisture. We have very wet winters, and although it's sunny and dry right now, it's really cold, and tomorrow we're expected to get a storm that's gonna bring either snow or freezing rain. Let's cross our fingers for snow. Freezing rain is not a good thing. It causes limbs to break off of trees and can cause a lot of damage. But for the hive, what I need to do is to help control moisture. Specifically, I wanna reduce condensation on the inner side of the lid. 
This lid is only three quarters of an inch thick and doesn't insulate really well. So that's a very cold surface for the bees. So when they respirate and they breathe, just like we do, they breathe out moisture, that moisture will condense on the inside of the lid and then rain onto them. And wet bees are very dead bees. They can survive the cold temperatures, but not if they're wet. So I'm gonna be putting on about an inch and a half of styrofoam. I made these boards out of some scrap styrofoam I've had sitting in my garage for a few years. You've probably seen it sitting in the background of some of my videos. I just took it and cut it to size, stacked two of them together, and then taped them so that they stay together. I'll just be stacking it on top of the lid. The idea is that that will help to keep that inner surface of the lid a little bit warmer to prevent water from condensing. Instead, it should just vent out that upper vent. By using a brick and a strap, I can hold that styrofoam piece down so it doesn't blow away. So this is my first winter using five frame nukes. We'll see if some of these modifications help and if this works and if they survive the winter. Thanks for watching. There's another advantage that there's another advantage. <laughs> I also have the hive tilted so that if water does condense on the inner surface of the lid, and now it's just too windy, you probably can't hear me. <laughs>